Good morning and welcome to Rocky Mountain National Park. The birds are singing, the sun is shining, it's a gorgeous day here. And today I'm going to be driving up historic Old Fall River Road from the Fall River entrance up through open meadows where you can often find elk and other animals grazing, then past roaring cascades and waterfalls, through deep forest up a narrow valley as we follow Fall River, finally up and up into the alpine tundra where the trees give way. Our final destination will be the Alpine Visitor Center at nearly 12,000 feet above sea level. It's gonna be a gorgeous drive. I sure hope you'll join me. We're going to begin our journey today at the Fall River Visitor Center on Highway 34, just a little bit west of Estes Park. In my opinion, it's one of the nicest visitor centers in Rocky Mountain National Park. And so in just a minute from now, we're going to be entering the National Park and uh, through the Fall River entrance, driving up through Horseshoe Park, past the alluvial fan, and then we'll begin our journey on Old Fall River Road, which is an 11-mile dirt road. It's just one way as it leads from the lower meadows all the way up to the Alpine Tundra and to the Alpine Visitor Center. So here we go. first stop this morning is Sheep Lakes, right along Highway 34 in Horseshoe Park. And uh, there are a couple of large ponds here where uh, sheep tend to gather. Oftentimes they'll come down once or twice a day during the summer, usually to eat uh, some of the soil that contains minerals that their bodies need. So they'll come down from the high mountains above and uh, cross the road and make their way down to the ponds behind me over here. Uh, you also find uh, moose and sometimes elk and other animals uh, bathing in the, in the ponds. It's a really cool place to stop. Today there are no animals and so we're going to keep moving. stop is here at the alluvial fan. There are two entrances, but I prefer to enter via the west entrance. It's a larger parking lot and there are more amenities. You'll also find from this trailhead a wheelchair accessible trail leading up to some of the best viewpoints. From those viewpoints you can see the roaring river cascading down over the rocks. In fact you can probably hear it in the background now. If you come in early October, this area is surrounded by colorful aspen trees. Well, as you may have noticed, there are boulders and gravel strewn everywhere. Now, if you look from above, you would see that this debris field spreads out in the shape of a fan. This type of a debris field is called an alluvial fan. Now, all of this was caused by two major events. The first was in 1982. High upstream, a dam at Long Lake broke, sending floodwaters raging down the valley, tearing up the canyon, and depositing this debris. It also flooded the town of Estes Park. Then, in 2013, we had a major flood that buried the road in debris and rerouted the river. Now, if you come here in late summer or early autumn, when the water levels are low, you'll often find families with small children playing here in the rocks and the small pools of water. Just be aware that earlier in the year, the streams are really running fast and are not safe 
for children or for adults, so keep your distance. Well, you may have noticed that I'm able to film inside the National Park today, and that's because I finally obtained my commercial filming permit. It took quite a while and wasn't cheap, but I can now legally film within the park, as long as I follow a number of conditions. That means I'll be able to bring you more videos like this one. In 1913, before the founding of Rocky Mountain National Park, the state of Colorado, together with Grand and Larimer counties, determined that they would build a road that would link Estes Park and Grand Lake. It would follow an ancient trail that had been used by native peoples along Fall River. The Arapaho called this trail the Dog Trail because they would use their dogs to pull items over the mountains via this route. The initial work began at the end of Horseshoe Park in the Endo Valley. Now the first year of construction was primarily done by convicts who were brought up from Canyon City, Colorado. These men worked long days with picks and shovels. Although some had thought the road might be completed within a year, it ended up taking seven. This project changed hands many times as various contractors learned that building a road in this terrain was exceedingly challenging. Welcome to Chasm Falls. This is one of my favorite stops on the way up Old Fall River Road. Here, as you can see, Fall River gets compressed into a very narrow slot in the rocks and then elegantly drops, creating a beautiful waterfall of Chasm Falls. In my opinion, it's one of the more beautiful waterfalls here in Rocky Mountain National Park, and it's really easy to get to. Just a few steps down from the parking lot, be aware they can cut, sometimes get a little icy during the winter time or during the uh, off season, but uh, very easy to get to otherwise. Now the best time of day to see and photograph these waterfalls is on an overcast day or before the sun rises or just after it starts to set. Although I must say, on those times of day it can be a little chilly, so uh, bring a jacket. In September of 1920, Old Fall River Road was finally open to vehicle traffic between Estes Park and Grand Lake. This new road was promoted as being part of a 240-mile loop that would begin and end in Denver. It would pass through Estes Park, Grand Lake, and Berthet Pass. Even after its completion, this road suffered from many challenges. It is located on the side of a steep canyon wall, and that meant that it was subject to regular rockfalls and also damage from avalanches. It was also very narrow, with many sharp turns, including some that required drivers to back up in order to complete the turns. This definitely was not conducive to the ever-increasing traffic. At just under four miles, you'll notice boxes of rocks held together with metal bands. This area of switchbacks is often referred to as Old Faithful. It gets its name from the avalanches that occur so regularly in this section. These make a real mess of the road, and it's one of the reasons why this road opens so late each year. Above the switchbacks, keep a lookout to your left. You may begin to notice numerous waterfalls coming down Sundance Mountain. This is especially true in July. Soon, you'll also get glimpses of Fall River cascading through the trees next to the road. Be sure and find good places to stop and pull over so you can get out and enjoy these gorgeous views.
So we've arrived at Willow Park. You have to be on the lookout for this stop as there isn't any sign for it. Willow Park is located just below treeline. Here the forest begins to give way to open meadow and marshland. There are actually areas like this all over Rocky Mountain National Park and they're prime habitats for wildlife. In fact, just a minute ago, I had a young deer racing past me. Here at Willow Park, you can enjoy the early stages of Fall River as it winds through the meadow. Look up and you can see that you are surrounded by high peaks. And on one of the ridges, you may even notice the Alpine Visitor Center, our final destination. Now, one of the special things about this park is that there is an old ranger cabin here. There are a number of ranger cabins just like this spread throughout the park. They used to have rangers staying in them during the summer months who would monitor the area, but these days with the limited park funding, they're only used sporadically. Well, take a look around at this beautiful area, have a little picnic, enjoy yourself, and then let's continue onward. So just a short ways up from Willow Park, you will arrive at the Chapin Pass Trailhead. The Chapin Pass Trailhead gives access to Chapin, Chiquita, and Ypsilon Mountains. They're very high mountains with spectacular views. If you're going to hike them, you want to leave early in the morning to avoid any chance of thunderstorms, and you still want to check the weather just to be safe. Uh, the first section of hike is very rocky and very steep. And uh, until you get above tree line, it's, it's a bit rough going, so be ready for some exertion. But it's a beautiful hike up to the top of Chapin. And if it's a good day and no threat of storms, heading on up to Chiquita and Ypsilon can be magical as well. We're gonna continue on up the road until we break out of the trees. now reach the world high above the trees. Up here, the average temperature is too cold for trees to grow. This results in this wide open tundra. Actually, a third of Rocky Mountain National Park is alpine tundra. That's one of the things that makes this park so special. Right now, I'm standing next to a small pond that is a favorite hangout of elk. They can often be found here grazing in the lush grasses surrounding it. This spot can be especially beautiful in the morning. Actually, I was here this morning very early and enjoyed a spectacular sunrise as the clouds lit up and reflected in the small pond. Well, our next stop is our final stop, the Alpine Visitor Center. As you can see, we've arrived at the Alpine Visitor Center at Fall River Pass. Stop in the Visitor Center, talk to the friendly rangers, and learn about life above treeline. They've got some great exhibits as well. Also, you can take a hike up Alpine Ridge Trail, high above the park, looking down on the Alpine Visitor Center. 
It's quite a workout, but it's a lot of fun. We also have the Trail Ridge store here where you can buy gifts of all sorts as well as coffee and other food. From here at the Alpine Visitor Center, you can drive on down to Grand Lake, which is a great day trip, or turn left and continue up Trail Ridge Road to Estes Park. Well, that's it for our journey today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you can, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.